Hey, Reckoners, and welcome back. Today we are playing the Warlock of Fire Top Mountain. These guys had a booth at PAX West, and they are also the developers of the Forest of Doom, which is a game I started recording way back, like over a year ago, back when I had listened to 100 subs. I started recording the Forest of Doom, uh, which was like just literally a choose your own adventure novel. Like it was just pages of text, you make decisions. And that was more or less it. I ended up throwing out all the footage because I felt like the Let's Play captured too much of the game. But talking to them at PAX, they said, do Let's Play this game. It actually has some gameplay elements. Uh, so this is, at the core, the same thing, where it's a choose your own adventure novel. But it also has some cool tactical combat. Synchronous turned tactical combat. So, let's dive into it. I don't know... I'm basically just going to do one playthrough. We're going to choose... They were telling me you're going to choose one of 12 playable guys. So we're going to pick one and do one playthrough. Um, I'm curious to see what kind of like rewind functionality they have or if I, if I have to replay the game every time I die because this could be really short or really long. So, I mean, we'll see. It's loosey goosey. Greetings, player. Welcome to the world of Titan. In particular, the most notorious of all the lands. Alanzi Alancia? Alancia. Oh, the Alancia. I am Oriana. You sound like a man, Oriana. The keeper of souls, your guide and your game master of sorts. Many adventurers have entered Firetop Mountain over the last 30 years or so. Voracious readers have wandered the many passages battling the monsters within and negotiating the many traps, only then to take on the mighty Zagor the Warlock. With skill, stamina, and luck, they have chosen their many paths and rolled their fate. Many of these brave young adventurers have perished in the darkness, and their souls even now lie unclaimed. You appear to be the next brave soul to take on the mountain and all it contains. To do this, you will need to choose an Alanzian hero to take into the mountain. Don't get too comfortable with your choice, however, as the ways are treacherous, and it is doubtful that they will survive. Only by bringing me the souls of the fallen may you be blessed with new heroes over time, each with their own quests within Zagor's domain. Okay, so there will be some significant value, allegedly, uh, to replay. Let's select my hero. Who do I have to choose him? For, for now, I think I just have these front four, right? Can I pick you? Oh. Oh, uh, village. I hear some adventurers like to use bribery as a way of getting around tricky opponents. In, okay. But how do I choose? Well, let's see. We have. Lenica Ekadi. That's a cool name. Cool set of skills. Stamina. He's very lucky and stuff. Okay. I'm just kind of browsing. I'm gonna go by look mostly. Decon Strom, no, 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 not my cup of tea. Alexandra of Black Sand, a warrior, eh. This guy's cool, I like his swords a lot. He's pure warrior, though. Born in the Feng Got Speed. Okay, what if I say next group, what happens? Okay, these are all locked, right? Okay, yeah, I, need, I need souls. But I can pick you guys? Oh, they just give advice. You can paint and unpaint illustrations by clicking on them. Okay, you guys are just advice. Okay, there's... Whoa! I really want this guy. Oh, I really want this guy. 23 is his name. A grizzled rhino man, ex-soldier who wanders the southern fringes of the Kragen Heights, working as a mercenary. Okay, we have a goal. Who even cares about Skyrider? Oh, he's... Okay, you're kind of cool, but I mean, you can't compete! I don't know how much I like his playstyle of pure stamina, but... That doesn't matter. Whoa! Was... Okay, there's a lot more than 12. That guy's cool, he's got a cudgel. Oh, she's cool too! Jeez! So much cool stuff. Okay. That's later, I guess. Maybe there'll be DLC. Or something. Wait, what is that? Okay, you're kind of cool. Is that a skull on a stick? Yeah, it is. That's like a skull and an axe. That's pretty cool. Are you a cowboy? What are you? A daughter of the wealthy merchant, blah, blah, blah. They don't have class labels, which is fine and cool. Okay, let's just, let's just go back. Let's just, let's just limit our options to what's actually available. So I think right now I'm leaning towards the two outside chaps. Okay, 17, 9, 10. As opposed to, so you lose three luck, but gain three stamina. I I tend to go to the less min-maxed kind of guys, but that doesn't always work out. So let's see, what do we got? We got a single strike directly in front and a single strike 
to the right, to the diagonal right. Oh, I see. And then one all the way around, and then one to the sides. What do you have? These don't mean a lot to me right now, because I don't really know. Less slash. Poison strike. Ooh, ooh, and it's got reach. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go with you, because you have a spear. You're cool. Let's see. So we have chosen Lanika Ekadi. Lanika is a keen explorer, especially of the bustling cities that she had... Oh, it's a she. I am sorry. She uh, had previously thought were only legend. Every new person, place, or object she encounters is thoroughly questioned, explored, or examined. That sounds intrusive. Before she rushes on to the next e exciting discovery, her endless enthusiasm can be tiring for her adventuring companions who take their civilized surroundings for granted. She tends to keep a memento for each new location she visits, keeping them in her pack or hanging them from her armor. Her attributes, I didn't even see these. Notice things that would normally be unseen or ignored, love it. Dexterous, high speed, okay, I mean, she sounds pretty dang right up my alley, so let's see. You have chosen Lunica Ekadi, a wise choice for your first game player. Before entering the mountain, I want you to visit the one-armed swordmaster of Anvil, Lin Wen Sai. He will teach you the basics of combat, which you need to know if your hero is to survive Zagor's domain. I'm hit to break it to you, darling, but uh, we've got no chance of surviving Zagor's domain, quite frankly. During your adventures, you will encounter many different foes, magical and monstrous, brigand and beast. There will be an assortment of creatures lurking within Firetop Mountain, eager to bring your adventure to a premature end. But let us learn to walk before we start running, shall we? Lin Wen Sai wants you to fight over some quintains, which will allow you to, to which will allow you to experience how combat functions. Fight the quintains! The quintains sounds like the rival ranch down the road. I have never heard that word quintain used to refer to like a dummy. That's cool. Okay, during combat you can choose to move or attack. Five second space. I will choose to move. I did it. Move. Okay. After you select your action, both you and your opponent will play out their moves simultaneously. Indeed! Move to the side to avoid the Quintain's attack. So I don't actually know where he's attacking. I'm just kind of guessing he's attacking in front. And it's a tutorial, so he probably is. Ha, you missed, you fool. Sometimes it is better to attack where the enemy is likely to move to instead of where you currently are. Attack the space in front of the Quintain. Okay. So, I don't know what this 2 means. I don't know why it's not giving me the option to move or attack, but whatever. If both you and your foe try to attack each other at the same time, you will clash. It is then a test of who has the greatest skill with the loser taking damage. Okay. You have two skills. Yeah, let's just pound you. Yeah, you don't have a chance. Oh, I see. Die rolled us. It is random, so you could still win. Oh, no. Okay, I guess I didn't. We still have one more skill, so yeah. Your enemies will move and attack in somewhat predictable patterns. Pay attention to when they shake to indicate that they'll be attacking the next round. Use your movement and attacks to defeat the Quintain. So his back's to me. So I say we attack him. Ah, I should have moved him, a fool. So he's going to attack there. I don't want to move into it. Can I just move diagonally? I cannot move diagonally. I can, okay, so I can attack. Um, Let's move over here. This seems like a bad decision. He attacks. I move here. He's wobbling. That's fine. We can just attack through him again. We got the skill. These dice are hot. Okay, so he's moving there. He's attacking again. You have no hope. No hope. Yeah, victory! I got a soul! Woo, who put a soul in that Quintain? That's what I want to know. You sick one on freak. Oh gosh, two versus one. Okay. Can I make them attack each other by mistake? In addition to the basic attacks, your hero has a special attack. Your hero has special attacks. They can unleash. These powerful attacks can take several turns, recharge, so use them sparingly. Defeat this pair of Quintains. Okay. I'm assuming they're moving. I want to try a left slash. I did it! I did the left slash. So he's clearly attacking there. I'm going to move here. I know he's moving that way. So I'm going to poison strike. How? Sucker. I move over here. Can I finish this fool? Okay, he's gonna move out of the way. I don't think this is gonna be a whiff. 
Uh, let's just move. Move, move, move. Yeah. Okay, and you're dead. And you're gonna try and attack me, but you have no chance once again. Clash. Ooh, double sixes. But, okay, and we did that. You lost no stamina, you gained three souls, you defeat the contains. Congratulations, you have passed the basic combat training. Just one more thing, player. While on your quest, keep an eye out for wooden benches like this one. Rest ye here, wary traveler, okay? Using them will allow you to restore your stamina. If you run out of stamina, your adventure ends, so be sure to take a rest now and then. You also have some provisions which you can use at any time, but they tend to work best when you are resting at a bench, so keep that in mind. You will receive three resurrection stones at the start of your quest. If your adventurer dies heroically, they can use one stone to bring them back to life. Be warned, though, that your hero will only appear at the last bench that they passed. You will also lose any souls that, they ab that you absorbed between the start, between the seat, and the location of their death. Very dark souls. This is where I leave you, player. It is time for you to begin the journey. Travel to Firetop Mountain. And we made it to Firetop Mountain. We won. We won. Oh, we're at the bottom, I see. You rest at the base of Firetop Mountain from your two-day hike. Strange red vegetation spreads across its peak like a blood-red stain. This journey has taken you further away from the fishing village of Ikad, but your lust for magic history and art has led you to Zagor's lair. Research and rumors have brought you here due to the promise of unique magical treasures. You mainly seek the Amulet of Ashra, a powerful artifact that offers protection and good fortune to those who keep the memory of the old gods. The amulet was prized by one known as Cosbin Minamin, a master of fire elementals who wanted to use the magical rubies set into the jewelry for some evil arcane acts. You have tracked him to the mountain, where he is now in the service of the evil warlock. So that's our personal subquest. Although warned by Anvil's villagers, you fear not the threats of the warlock's creatures and traps. As you confidently approach the cave entrance, you level your spear, ready for an encounter. Your adventure starts here. That's really cool. That's a very small detail. You level your spear. Like, that's unique to me, relative. I mean, I'm, I don't know if I'm the only person with a spear, but other characters don't have spears. That's that's a really cool attention to small detail. I friggin' love it. I love this art. God, I'm hyped for this game. Peer into the gloom. Okay. You see dark, slimy walls with pools of water on the stone floor in front of you. The air is cold and dank. Hearing faint scurrying to the east, you light your lantern. The dampness of this place reminds me of home. Still, I can almost smell the magic in the air, and the old gods will protect me as I search for my prized amulet. Step warily into the blackness. Uh, I assume that means I've already done it, so we're gonna do this. Approach the fork ahead. Tap, tap, tap. After a few yards, you arrive at a junction. So we heard scurrying to the east. But I see this guy right here. The first major decision. <sighs> I'm a go west kind of guy, just by if given no no hints whatsoever, I choose west. It's, my, it's one of my favorite cardinal directions, quite frankly. So uh, I'm tempted to go west, but the- because of this guy. I mean, the, the west, natural predilection to west, plus this guy strongly tempt me for west. However, east, I can't tell if this screen is a hint to go east or to avoid east. We're gonna go east, screw it. I be too good. The sound of scurrying continues ahead of you, as well as the sound of heavy footsteps. Great. The last thing I want is to run into a troop of orcs this early on. Indeed, a few yards ahead, at the limit of the light cast by your lantern, you catch sight of a cleft in the tunnel wall. Duck inside the cleft, do it! Shutter in your lantern, you wait with bated breath in the darkness. I should keep out of sight until I know what I'm up against. You listen intently as the footsteps come closer and then pass by your hiding place without the owners of those footsteps ever knowing you are there. Your keen eye spies a few smaller rocks tumbling down from one of the granite walls as you wait in the dim cleft. What does that indicate? A few smaller rocks tumbling down from one of the granite walls. Uh, yeah, let's jump out and surprise it. 
Weapon drawn, you burst from your hiding place and surprise the two greenish creatures clad in rough leather armor patrolling the warlock's domain. With the orcs caught unawares, you are able to wound one severely before the creature knows what is happening. With a heavy cleaving blade in one hand, the second orc is ready for you. Fight the orcs! This is a very narrow place to fight in, but you're... Okay, you're almost kaput. Um... The left slash threatens not much. Okay, uh... I'm gonna do a poison strike. Yes! Pow! It's so good, you guys! It's dumb! Um... Left slash! Yeah! Easy peasy! It's gonna take a long time to get to 500 souls, though, for that rhino guy. 23. God, he's so cool! Sorry, anything- it's like, he's a rhino-headed man, which I was just thinking about as the coolest thing ever. Like, for no reason, like, earlier this week, I was just thinking how rhino-headed things are super underrepresented. But also, he has a number for a name. Anyway, a quick search of the orc's bodies turns up a handful of gold pieces, a crude bone charm, and a half-eaten rat on a stick. Score! This bone charm looks really interesting. Yeah, whatever. Five gold pieces. Take the orc's bone charm. You pocket the bone charm and try not to retch as you get close to the orc's stinking corpses. Perhaps it will be useful later. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, let's head on east. Let's continue east. Do I get a bench? I would like a bench, please. The passageway soon comes to an end at a solid-looking wooden door. Trying to open it, the door refuses to budge. You listen at the door but hear nothing. The amulet I seek is unlikely to be in this part of Firetop Mountain. Maybe I should leave this door. Well, if this is true... We will go back. I don't think I'm the kind of violent door opener anyway. You arrive at the junction in the passage. You look left to see the cave entrance in the dim distance. I mean, our only option is to walk straight on, but we're gonna get ambushed. A little way along the passageway, you come to what is clearly a sentry post. Oh, he's asleep. Oh god, this art's so good! I want it colored. Yeah, leave it colored, baby. You approach with caution and can see another orc, this time on his own, in leather armor, asleep at his post. If all orcs I meet are asleep, that omelet is as good as mine. Carefully approach the sleeping orc. There is no other way through the orc other than straight in front of him. You should try to sneak past, or perhaps direct approach him. Or perhaps the direct approach might be better. So... I think this game is going to fall, maybe not consistently, but at least in this instance. I'm afraid that this game might fall into the trap of not adequately rewarding stealth. Uh, because right now I'm on a crusade for souls, and I gotta kill things to get souls, and I'm pretty sure sneaking by isn't gonna give me a soul. However... The game could punish me, but if I wake him up and fight him, it'll be noisy, which will change conditions later on. I'm not sure. From a roleplay perspective, I want to sneak by. But I also really want that soul! Uh, why can't I just kill him in his sleep like a hero? There's an angry snort from the orc as he wakes. He grumpily gets up with a start, draws his weapon, and snarls at you, ready to fight. I bet this sneaking thing is like a luck roll anyway, or something like that. Okay, this is a weird place to start. I assume he's going to move, so I'm going to left slash. Ah! Okay, or we can do that. What is your skill, orc? Your skill is six, my skill is nine! I'm going to move back here. Dodge your move. Now, I don't know where you're going to go, but I'm going to poison strike. Kapow! Because it's so OP. Okay, I'm going to move here. And then I'm going to left strike. Ah, yeah. I shouldn't need to do that. It doesn't matter, because Poison Strike is bananas! There's an angry army. Did that already? Okay. The passageway begins to widen until you enter a cave. However, blocking the cave's exit are two of the ugliest creatures you have ever seen. They have the proportions of dogs, but their hide is rough and scaly. Each beast is chained to the cave wall, secured to their thick brass collars. The two orc hounds begin to snarl and strain at their chains. They cannot reach you, but their chains are long enough that they should that should you approach, you will not be able to escape their slavering jaws. I am not a big fan of dogs, orc hounds especially. 
You are going to have to deal with them quickly, one way or another, before they attract the attention of an orc patrol, or maybe something even worse. I think I can take them. Draw on your weapon, you prepare to engage the orc hounds in combat. However, because they are chained to the walls, their movement is limited. This will be interesting, I think. How limited is their movement, pray tell? So if I move here... He wobbled like he was going to attack, so he's- I, I hope- I hope it's not a lunging attack. Good, it's not. But he is cool looking. Oh boy, is he. Okay, we'll move here. You're dead. Yeah. Don't stand a chance, puppers. Move here. Okay, he's going to attack. He's got skill four. I say we just attack over him. Clashing! He rolled a four, I rolled a five. He rolled a six, rolled a five. It doesn't matter. Attack with the left slash here. This character's got a good, just suite of moves. Very versatile. Four souls! Those souls have more... Or those, those goblins... Uh, they're not orc hounds, have more souls than them. Hey! It's a butt rest! Leaving the cave as quickly as you can, you follow the new passageway as it turns north. Yeah, we got it. Set against the walls a wooden bench where you may rest. Uh, player, I would strongly advise sitting on this bench. If you do not, Lunica Akadi will not be able to resurrect at this location if they perish. Is there a downside to resting? Does, it, does time pass or something? I don't know. Well, we'll sit and rest. I might as well. You sit down on the bench and rest for a moment. Your aching muscles ease and your tiredness wanes. It is good to take a break on your adventure. I'm gain stamina. Good. Okay. To your left, on the west face of the passage, there is a rough-cut wooden door. You listen at the door and can hear a rasping sound, which may be some sort of creature snoring. Ugh, curiosity killed the cat. Open that door! I'm, I don't want, like, things behind me either. The door opens to reveal a small, smelly room. In the center of the room is a rickety wooden table on which sits a lit candle. Underneath the table is a small wooden box. Asleep on a straw mattress, groaning in the far corner of the room is a green-skinned orc. He is a stocky creature with an ugly, warty face. That's just mean. He must be the guard for the night watch. I wonder if that wooden box contains any interesting trinkets. Is it worth the risk to take a look? Uh, I want, I mean, unfortunately, I don't have the option to just straight up attack the orc, which is what I do. You know, I, that's me. Modus operandi, if something's asleep, I am compelled to attack it. That's just kind of how we're doing this. But not an option here, so uh, we'll try and steal the box. Uh, I'm curious to see if it's a skill or a luck thing. Luck. Okay, carefully begin to creep into the sleeping orc's room. What happens? We gotta roll a 10? We gotta roll a 10 on two d6s? Can I back out? That's not great. Ho ho ho! You clumsily jostle- Oh... We had to get less than a 10. Dang it. <laughs> Why is that a lower number? Ah, uh, doesn't make any sense. Did we lose one luck? That's bull crap. Ah, uh, 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 there. You need a score of 10 or under. I, I can't read apparently. That's part of the problem. <sighs> Let's fight the orc. What's up? You have no hope. Which way are you going to go, orc? Go this way. Please go this way. Good. I can attack around corners. What are you doing? What are you, 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 what are you doing? Do you have a fancy attack? Nope, you just suck at life. Okay. And, uh, poison strike. Chop. Oh, he's a spear too. Well, I still win. How many, how many souls do we got? Right. With the box in hand, you leave the room and open the box in the passage. Inside, you find four gold pieces and a small mouse. Which must have been the creature's pet. Oh, for some reason. I think this comes from having seen Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome at a very young age. For some reason, after, I defeat, if, after I've defeated something, if I know it has a thing, like a pet, or an item, that it holds dear, that hu- sorry about that, it humanizes it too much. And, uh, I feel- I feel guilt. And, I don't know, I don't know what that is, but no one has a pet now. It's not some it's not some heartless, evil orc. It had a pet, it cared for a thing. Uh, don't make me feel guilt for killing orcs, okay? I mean, 
in the right game, make me feel guilt for killing orcs. But in a dungeon crawler, don't make me feel guilt for killing orcs. You release the mouse, which scurries off down the path of I wanted to keep the mouse! It's gonna run into a trap and die. Gosh, dang it. Can I rest at the friggin' seat again? I guess not. Oh well. Okay, you are- so, that's gonna be annoying though, cause like, let's say- let's just say, in the future, when I die, if between the point where I die, and the seat on which I rested, there were things through which I got lucky and succeeded with my die rolls, I'm gonna have to remake those die rolls, and that's super aggravating. <sighs> we'll see how that goes. And that's, that's kind of the trouble, I guess, with a lot of, um, with video game adaptations of choose your adventures. They involve dice. It's like, I just want to choose the path. I don't want to freaking rely on the dice. Uh, when I try and choose the same branch. You arrive at another door. You listen at it, but hear nothing. We're going to open every door until it bites us in the butt too hard to handle. It's a dragon who breathes fire and kills us. The door opens to reveal a small room with a stone floor and dirty walls. There's a stale smell in the air. In the center of the room is a makeshift wooden table, on which is standing a lit candle. Under the table is a small box, and using your keen eye, you can see that it moves every so often. Ugh. In the far corner of the room is a straw mattress. I'm going to open the box. Strange runes adorn the box, which is rather light. As you pick it up, something rattles within. Great. You open the lid and a small stake pops out of the box, eager to bite your wrists. Achievement unlocked. Ooh, peanut brittle. Discover an old orcish trick. Even though you are surprised, you manage to dodge them. Multiple snakes. Oh no! How skilled are these snakes? Can I poison snakes? So he's gonna attack. Show me his skill! Oh, it's not gonna give me the option. Uh, we'll open the poison strike anyway. Oh, he attacked, he attacked diagonally. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Uh, we're gonna fall back. Oh, that's what happened. That's weird. Okay. We're gonna attack forward. Okay. We're gonna attack with a left slash. Oh, but I forgot they attacked diagonally. They have skill of five. It doesn't matter. Oh, I destroyed the table. That's interesting. Oh, I shoved you. That's weird. Okay. Uh, attack again. Why the heck not? Okay. Okay. Those soulful... What do we get? The box has fallen to the ground during your fight with the snakes. There appear to be nothing else... There appears to be nothing else inside. It must have been a practical joke made by one of the orcs. You decide to continue to head deeper into the orcs barracks. Really? There's no... Empty. Lame. The tunnel turns eastward and then splits. I'm gonna continue north. Because north is my second favorite cardinal direction. Further up the passage, on the west wall, you see another wooden door. You listen at the door and hear the worst singing you have ever heard in your life. Investigate the hideous din! The door opens to reveal a small room. The room is dirty and unkempt. A straw mattress lies in one corner, and in the far corner, a flight of steps leads out of the chamber. In the center of the room is a wooden table upon which a candle burns, lighting the room with its flickering flame. A small box rests under the table. Seated around the table are two small orcs with warty skin dressed in leather armor. They are drinking some sort of grog, and by the way, they stagger to their feet on your arrival. You assume they are very drunk. Ooh. I don't think I have it in me to intimidate some orcs. I think they're, they're drunk and brave. Also, I want their souls! The two drunken orcs you now face are obviously startled by your entrance, and as quickly as they are able, they fumble around for their weapons. I'm curious if drunkenness will play a part in any way. They appear to have less HP. You're just done. You cannot dodge my poisonous strike. Pow. Oh, I guess that's a bit of a waste. He attacked diagonally. Well, that's interesting. Uh-oh. Doesn't matter, man. Doesn't... Oh, diagonal right. Okay. Hooray! We defeat the Dragon Orcs. You wipe your bloodied weapon on the mattress. The green blood leaves a slimy stain on the straw. Stepping over the bodies towards the table, you flinch at the foul stench of the creatures. You pick up the box from under the table and examine it. There's a lot of boxes under tables in this dungeon. 
It is a wooden box with crude hinges. The name Farigo Di Maggio, Farigo Di Maggio, is inscribed on a brass nameplate on its lid. Open the box! We never learn a lesson. The box contains a small leather-bound book entitled The Making and Casting of Dragonfire. You open the pages and begin to read. Fortunately, it is written in your own language, and so is probably not understood by the orcs. Otherwise, this treasure would certainly not be as loosely guarded as it was. The book is written in tiny handwriting by Ferrigio Di Maggio. In it, he tells the story of his life's work, the creation of the Dragonfire spell with which no to fight evil dragons. You read how, in his last years, Farigio, Farigo finally perfected his spell, but by then was too old to make use of it. So he completed his book, locked it in a chest, and hid it in the depths of Firetop Mountain, afraid that it might fall into the wrong hands. The last page reads, And so, you who now hold this book, you have- Oh, sorry, it's time. You have my life's work in your hands. The power of destruction is yours, if you wish it, but do not waste it. Unless do you use the spell for the purpose for which it was intended, you shall be consumed by evil itself, and die by the fire from your own hands. Remember, only when the dragon's breathes its fire, at your should you raise your arms and say, Ekel Elif, Ekel Elif, Elif Elif, Dimaggio. Why Dimaggio? That's a little weird. Okay, but, um... Anti-fire dragon, I see. You say these words slowly and softly. Suddenly, the page seems to glow, and as this glow disappears, so do the words on the pages of the book. You repeat the spell to yourself to memorize it. Good thing you don't accidentally cast it. Uh, two ways to leave the room. We're gonna take the flight of steps because we fought so hard to earn this exit. We're gonna use it, gosh dang it. Climbing the steps, you finally emerge at the far end of a large room. As untidily kept as any you have entered so far, a large chair behind a solid looking table suggests that someone, or something, of rank uses this room. On one side of the room is a wooden bench. To your right is the far wall of the room to the to, uh, to your right in the far wall in the far wall of the room is a large door that clearly leads onwards into the mountain. However, a chest in the center of the room catches your keen eye. What? What? Nothing mentioned the cool little red riding hood orc. Opposite you is a man-sized creature with a warty face standing over a smaller creature of similar race. With a whip in his hand, the orc chieftain has been beating his servant who is whimpering beneath him. I'm going to attack the chieftain first. I don't actually think that the orc uh, guy is going to help at all. Yeah, as you spring at the orc, his servant rises to his feet, picks up a hefty wooden stick, and joins the melee. But to your disappointment, he attacks you. Ungrateful wretch. Yeah, I am not really that surprised. But it's worth a shot. Uh, continue the fight anyway, man. Worst case scenario, I get double the souls. Okay. This is an easy decision. Can he whip through here? I think he can. I think he's about to whip this thing. Uh, so I'm just gonna attack this table. He's gonna attack that. He only oh! How can she slap diagonal? Gosh dang it, take that you turd monkey. You're just gonna die. Oh no, I wasted my efforts. Uh, it's gonna talk diagonal again. So we'll dodge it. Like a boss. And now you're donezo. What's he gonna do? Uh, let's move here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, poison strike. Oh no, he missed. He outsmarted me. He has six skill. Okay, left slash. Oh man, this guy's good. He is good. But is he good enough? Six skill to my nine skill. Ah, uh, okay. I need to learn this guy's pattern. A little better. Okay, you attacked there. I'm gonna move over here. Oh, I'm just gonna need it. That's dumb of me. Uh. Uh. Where do I want to go? Let's go here. He's gonna whip. Oh, and two. Okay. Let's move back over here. Oh, god dang it. Move back over here. Let's try the left slash. Oh wait, no, that's dumb. What was I thinking? Okay, he's gonna do... Uh, friggin' whip again. Whip. We're gonna move back. What's he gonna do? I don't know, I don't care! Poison strike! 
Why is he roll so good? Ah! Oh! Uh, let's attack him. And miss, like a chump. Gosh dang it. Where's he gonna move? I'm thinking... There, yeah. Finally! Finally we get some skin on him. So he's gonna attack. Let's move here, yeah. Oh, no, he moves left. Okay, he's gonna swipe. Oh, diagonally! Dang it, Leroy. Attack there. No! Frack! Frack! Okay. I think he's gonna move here. Poison strike! Yes! Finally, I catch on. Jeez Louise. Okay, uh, no, left slash again. Nine to my twelve. Eat it! Uh, that is not super great. That's a, that's a good fight, though. I mean, more tricky patterns that I failed to grasp. The green blood of the dead orcs smells foul as it seeps from their bodies. You step around the corpses and investigate the chest. It is of sturdy construction made of strong oak and iron. It is firmly locked. Looking closer, your keen eye notices there appears to be a mechanical trap fashioned into the lock itself. Carefully attempt to trigger the trap. Step into the side of the chest. You break open the lock and swing the lid open. Your suspicions were confirmed. A soft click comes from the chest and a poisonous dart flits out, harmlessly hitting the wall on the other side. Sweet. Now that the chest is safe, you can expect your prize. Inspect the treasure! Leaning in, you look inside the chest to see what has been guarded so carefully- Show me already! There's a stash of gold pieces, and the label on the bottle shows it to be a potion of invisibility. Good for one dose. Boom! Of course I take the bottle. Why wouldn't I? You take the potion of invisibility. What a find. This will definitely come in handy during your adventures. Yeah. Yeah. And we got a bench. Sit on the bench and rest. I don't think I have provisions. You sit down on the bench and rest for a moment. Your aching muscles ease and your tiredness wanes. It is good to take a break on your adventure. Five, stamina, almost at full health. Cool, 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 okay. Uh, can I save the game here? Or does the game just naturally save? I hope the game naturally saves. Because I'm going to end the episode here. Uh, I don't have to kill the client yet, so we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But that was... Excuse me. Ugh. Uh, yeah, that's episode one. So thank you so much for watching. Um, uh, let, leave any comments. I'm curious if this would be a good game to stream. Like, after I finish this first run-through, if uh, doing kind of like a streamed uh, community-driven choice system might be a good idea. So, uh, leave your thoughts in the comment below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Signature catchphrase!